everybody, my name is Luke Marr, and this is Hot Mode, and today on Hot Mode, we are coming to you with a closet tour from none other than Saffron Barker. Now I know there was a little bit of controversy about our last closet tour, Molly May's experience. We're like, well, it was, you know, because it was her house tour. And I was like, well, no, 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 it said wardrobe tour, okay? So like, I'm expecting wardrobe to be expanded upon, you know what I mean? Not just, this is the architecture, and then do an architecture of your wardrobe tour. So the thing is, I found actually another British blonde whose title says wardrobe tour. This wardrobe tour, I actually think is worth a lot more of our time. I have a feeling I won't be disassociating in the middle of the video. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Now, for those of you that do not know Saffron Barker, she is a British YouTuber and influencer. I remember her videos from like way back when, when like vlogging was still popular on YouTube. She has pivoted over time, creating different lines and being different sponsors and faces of brands and different things. She's been on reality television as well. It should be interesting to see what goes on here and we can compare and contrast. Without further ado, let's get into it. Saf's house. Okay, my home renovation project. Okay, listen, I already like the fact that we're letting people know what to expect. It's about my home renovation, you know what I mean? It's not just wardrobe tour, and I mean closet and wardrobe tours on YouTube have a very specific idea of what they're supposed to be. Sorry, it's a trip. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Hi, Saffron. Video, I am so excited for. I'm just thinking about the name Saffron and also the fact that Saffron Barker is British. And I think about the iconic 90s TV show, Absolutely Fabulous, that is truly still to this day, something that I think about often. La Croix, it's a La Croix, sweetie. La Croix, sweetie. And the daughter in Abfab was named Saffron and they called it Safi, oh Safi darling. Hey, darling, it's not me, sweetie. Stop no, it. Safi, Safi, Safi honey, sweetie. No, 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 and that's all I can think about. So honestly, I'm intrigued, this is helping me. So as a lot of you guys know, I have been renovating my house for okay. over a year now. It's been a long time coming and I'm nearly done. We can see actually the temperature that is on the wall there. It's good to know that she has a room temperature control situation going on. It's always been like a dream of mine to have a walk-in wardrobe. And I actually wow. have to think to myself like every single time I come in here. Like, it looks great. Time. I like yeah, this porticullis door yeah. situation. Okay. No for a fact. It has the island. We're seeing a lot of sneakers, shelving, all that stuff. The the luxury product. It's there. It's your quintessential luxury wardrobe B roll. Nothing crazy. I chose not to have a door just because Interesting it choice. felt more like a walk in wardrobe rather than like a separate room. Probably a little bit harder to like store certain things if you're thinking about it from like an archival. Like I don't think that's really what she's thinking about. I feel like you should come in now. Okay. So we're still seeing, we're seeing some Bottega, we're seeing some LV, we're seeing Chanel maybe, Louis Vuitton, Dior. I gave a lot of my clothes away and I still obviously have a lot. I've got like a curve here that I just think gives the room a bit more character. I love it. All right, well, let's talk about that. I don't know if she's gonna really like get into it. Maybe she will. I'm intrigued by the fact that up top we have a lot of tote bags. There's a Louis Vuitton sort of motif. We can see those iconic Louis Vuitton monogram prints, but they're also surrounded by different little squiggles. You have a Christian Dior book tote, which is a Maria Grazia for Dior staple and original. At the same time, you can see there is a houndstooth motif and the Christian Dior logo that runs in the middle of it. The houndstooth, it is sort of historically a Dior motif, you know, tailoring, all that sort of stuff, very much a part of the brand. The Louis Vuitton, I would say that's like a makeup case and also some sort of like clutch bag. Monograms, really easy, not super crazy. There's a Balenciaga city bag in pink. I'm intrigued by the fact that it's really slouchy and it's not really like, I presume, filled with tissue paper or something to make it really stand up. It's probably gonna crease over time, but like, I ain't judging, I'm just saying. So that veal bag reminds me personally of the Louis Vuitton Alma. I think that they're not that cute, never really get them. Below that, we have another Louis Vuitton bag. It's the watercolory style with the big and large monogram. There's a Dior saddle bag next to it, I believe in the Dior monogram. John Galliano brought it back, and then he also put it on bags, i.e. the saddlebag, which was original design by him. And Maria Grazia brought them back. There's a Chanel, I think that's the boyfriend bag in blue leather. There's some heels sprinkled throughout, but there's not like a whole lot of Birkins and shit like that. I am a train gal. Wait, I'm dead. Train a gal. A lot of Nikes. There are some Jordans, I believe. And then those are like the dunks, the ones up top. I do like the dunks. I think the colors are nice on them. They're simple, they're easy, they're cute. We love trainers. I would have- Comme de garçon, you 
have that on the left and the right, the CDG Play Converse. Of every color of dark. These are the Nike Sakai's. These are like the waffle shoe. Sakai, which is a great Japanese brand. I love, I actually have a few of the Nike Sakai's myself. What they've done is they've taken two different or three different pairs of shoes and sort of re majigged them. They deconstructed them and then reconstructed them to make these sort of styles where it looks like it's multiple shoes layered on top of each other. I obviously have my Converse because they're like, my gym trainer, my go-to, my Jordans, my Dunks. These are my favorite shoes in the entire world. I actually can't believe it because I did actually get sent these. I think oh, this wow. might be one of the best PR parcels. Of course, I absolutely love Ben & Jerry's. Like, who doesn't? So She cares. She's intrigued by it. Something that she's proud of and that she's happy about. You know what I mean? And it's not like, here's my 40 million Birkins and my Kellys. I do actually have the matching bag to this. So this is the Balenciaga and Gucci collab. Okay, so Gucciaga. Caring had Gucci and Balenciaga collaborate. We got the triple S's that are an iconic sort of Demna staple at Balenciaga. It's the multiple soles layered on top of each other. But at the same time, you have the Gucci monogram that's placed at the tippy top of the shoe. And then it says Balenciaga across it. They're really ugly. Sorry. This is like one of my favorite collabs of all time. But the bag, I've actually just got- Saffron, I want better for you. Out of all of the collaborations that have existed, we need that to not be your favorite one. We need something else. I just happen to have this Balenciaga book that matches the shoe. I do feel bad for that book though. Because inside of that book is probably some of the most beautiful, amazing creative designs ever. And that book is sitting underneath a pair of probably one of the ugliest shoes that's ever been made. It's kind of depressing, but it's okay. We're moving on. And oh, wow, it really gives me like aesthetic vibes. So I just love it. And then here are all my jackets, bombers and stuff. I'll try and go through the drawers okay. quite quickly. Because I know a lot of you have seen the Gymshark drawers and there's a lot of them. What is Gymshark? So as you can tell, I've got my bodies, bracer vests, Crop tops, polo vest, and bandeau top. Oh, honey, she better band too. I say tomato, you say tomato. I say potato, you say potato. And then, oh my goodness, this is really satisfying. My baggy okay. just t-shirts, right? I didn't know they could look so good in a drawer. There's no way on God's green earth that if somebody did that for me, that those t-shirts would ever go back like that, ever. Never, never. It never is so ever. all the logos are facing the top. The top middle with the two little baby cherubs on it. I'm pretty positive that's a Fiorucci shirt. Fiorucci had like a little comeback. I would say like maybe 2019, 2020, 2021. And it was like kind of cool. I remember actually being in London and there was like the Fiorucci shop came back. There's some Gucci. I just wanted to shout out the Fiorucci top. All the logos are facing the top. Oh my goodness. I can't do that. Same. This is my attempt, by the way, of trying to do the logo on the top. It's actually horrendous, so. <laughs> Me, I respect that. That one out. So these bags that are on the shelf okay. are the ones that I don't really use as much. Fair, you know, you want them to be staples, stay where they are. There are some off-white bags below that Chanel bag. It's intriguing to see. It's more like, I guess my special occasion sort of bags. Like this is a holiday. Okay, so you also have another city bag. That one is much more structured than that pink one that we saw. I also presume that it's like a mini version. It's meant to be cute and pocket sized. We have a red luggage bag by Celine. It's from Phoebe Philo's era, or maybe it's not from Phoebe Philo's era. It might be from the Eddie Slaman era, but it was designed by Phoebe Philo when she was at the brand. There's also some Bottega. We can see those little crochet sort of style leather sandals. So, okay, cute. I don't hate. I'm intrigued. These are kind of like my holiday bags. The Fendi Bear, maybe a little much. These off white bags actually were like my first ever, well, definitely not my first ever handbag. I remember when I got a Kath Kidston handbag and it was like 35 pounds <laughs> and I saved my money up to get that bag and it felt like the biggest dream come true. So that was my first bag I ever I love that. Seen. But my first like proper designer bag, I'm pretty, oh no, I did get a Michael Kors one, mum, didn't I? Aw, to each their own. So kind of like my first ever like big designer purchase when I was kind of like earned my own money, I guess. So I'm very proud that they're on the side right there. I mean, Off-White, listen, like they were a little bit more accessible in terms of like being a luxury brand that also was making handbags. It wasn't like 4K for those bags. It was maybe like 700, 800, 900, which still a lot of money. 
But I can completely understand that being like, especially back, I would say maybe 2016, those kind of bags were much more affordable. All my jeans, I got rid of so many pairs of trousers and jeans. I just gave so many away because I had far too much. Okay, we need to stop buying so much pants and trousers, British influencers and YouTubers. It's just not, it's not the look. It's not 10 trash bags full, so that's nice. Or I presume it's not. When you see them hung, it just makes a difference. It makes you realize that it's just so unnecessary. I can actually find things now. Wow, my sustainable queen. I've got my cargoes, jeans, and then my smart trousers. And then this is where the good stuff happens because here comes my gym shirt drawers. I think I have nine. Okay, what? Here are some of my leggings. All right, I need to know what Gymshark is. Okay, so it's a brand from Birmingham, England, founded by Ben Francis, and it was born, it seems, out of being in the gym and trying to find clothes that work for the gym. Expanded from there. The story of Gymshark, the more you know. Very, very satisfying. Here is some more leggings. <laughs> Like a it's a lot it's of leggings. It's like a shop. It's a Look, lot. All the labels here. Actually, I'm saying that. Look, these are leggings. These are cycling shorts. Sports bras. Carla decided today I like this. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. There's no way on God's green earth I would be going to the gym that much. Realistically, I'm just not going to fold the sports bras. So it was just so much easier doing it like that. Oh my goodness. They're so bright. I just love color when I'm going to. Gym. I do actually like and the idea of the colors draws. though. So these are just like. Baggy shorts. Okay. Just easy throw on ones. And then, yeah, these are crop tops. Okay. But to be honest, I live in Gymshark. It sounds like an ad, but I really do. Like, every day I'm wearing Gymshark. I'm a Patagonia girl. Somebody told me that I was very granola, and I'm gonna be so open and honest. I didn't know I was granola, but like, I guess I technically am. I'm not like doing like, you know, the conspiracy theory granola shit. I think that's also part of being granola. Like, that's not me. I like, product that's good quality and gets repaired in a store. Yes, I am in fact granola. So if I'm not going to the gym, I'm still wearing it. So that's why I have so much. But if I'm going out, the thing that I always reach to is a corset. I love a corset. So these are all of my corset tops here. Okay. Oh, she said Vivian Westwood. Such a good investment. They smell amazing. What are they called? I know it's Diptyque, but what would you call this? I presume it's a fragrance hanger. I just want to see like how much. You would love the smell of my wardrobe. It smells so nice. I'm 48 so bucks. What'd you say? They're not cheap. Yeah, these yeah. aren't cheap. I thought there was one on each hang and I was like, girl, you're crazy. That's too much. You're doing too much. The fact that I have those, I don't have them from Diptyque because I'm not paying $48 for a bar of soap on a rope. Do you actually buy little lavender satchels? And what they do is A, they make things smell good, but they also do help to deter moths. I'm like, I like moths for the environment. I hate moths for the environment that's inside of my home because they eat things. Cedar, they don't like the smell of that. So I have like cedar on literal hanger rods, but that's what I use the room fresheners for, is more to deter things rather than make the wardrobe smell good. And then underneath I've got some LV shoes. So bag I got from Zara, I actually love it. Okay, well at least it's there, at least you're using it. I wouldn't recommend Zara, but attempting. I've got a Bottega bag. <laughs> okay, so that's the pouch bag by Bottega. It's like a little dumpling of leather, a pair of white Louboutins in the Bottega box. Okay. This Bottega box, I don't actually know if it's got Bottega heels. I probably it does have Bottega heels inside. Then some white Louboutins. The way that she says things are crazy and makes me laugh and I'm kind of upset. Louboutins. Louboutins. I love it. I think it's amazing. Louboutins. And then, yeah, this is my little Prada. Okay, so you have a Prada nylon backpack. Listen, I will say that that Prada nylon backpack, it's probably not from the 90s or at least the late 80s. When Mutra Prada invented the Pocono nylon back in the 80s, they started to make backpacks. They were a little bit more affordable because nylon was a lot easier to make. People were buying more and more and more and more and that's how Prada also started to become more of like a global brand is because of that nylon. So Prada backpack, it might not be a historic actual piece, but it definitely is a historic piece from the brand. The shoes, I hate the shoes, I'm sorry. Because I wear them sometimes. And yeah. You don't, you, don't, you don't really wear them that much. So I was thinking, oh, she's going to give them to me. But now they're just part of your decor. Just... These poor goddamn books. Stop putting your shoes on books. Read the books, please. Safi, Safi, darling, please read the books for mummy. This is my daughter, Safi. I prefer this whole vibe of like the big coats. I love my coats. I think they're so cool. This is my favorite coat. See? Oh my God, wow. She's going to take out a piece of clothing and show us her favorite piece. That's so amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so unexpected. Who would think that in a wardrobe tour? My own. I got this. <sighs> it's my birthday on Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I think I mean, I wouldn't have bought you that in a I like it. It's cute though. 
It's oh, fun. Yeah, Faux fur, checkerboard. Yeah, Christmas, my parents got me this, and it is my favorite jacket ever. And then a lot of these coats are just from the teddy my, coats. That's from Misguided Motel, PLT, River Island. I've got my boots underneath down here. Have I'm shoving. Okay, so I presume that those two on the left are Bottega. They had their moment, everybody was like, I want those Bottega boots. i you with my foot. <laughs> <laughs> so then here I've got, okay. to be honest, I'm not really sure what this is. Shirts. I mean, the Marine Sayre, little crescent moons I recognize. Some little striped shirts, easy peasy, some crochet experiences. Random tops, shirty, polo necky top stuff. At the top, my Chanel boots. Again, this book. Oh my God. That's what people have got me for presents, is books, and I absolutely love it. Well, you don't love them enough, Saf. Doesn't seem like they're getting read much. I don't know what the boots are. I presume that they're Chanel because they're on the Chanel book and they correlate it seems. I will say that bag does look like a Saint Laurent bag. And then this side is all my blazers. Okay. I wear blazers a lot. It's a big British thing, tailoring. This is my favorite suit of all time. See, I actually need to she's find gonna show to us. This. Intriguing, cute, I like it. Really? Throw it on the ground, no, no, makes sense. So no, I like the colors, yeah, no, it's fun. It. Okay, some LV bags, backpack, crossbody, clutch situation. I'll quickly show you these drawers. I've got more Gymshark. Okay, wow. Well, we might need to like have an intervention about the Gymshark. Oh, this is my marathon t-shirt. This is what they made me for when I ran the marathon for the uh, second time. I get it, you ran a marathon. I get it. We all get it. And then this is my Oh my god, okay. I thought oh, I had a clothing gym. addiction. And then down Jeez. Here, Gymshark jumpers. It's a well, lot of Gymshark. Like and then this picture here, actually, my best friend Libby got me for what is, my I'm sorry. 20. No, and like, I love that for you and Libby, and I'm happy for you. But like, what is it about putting luxury brands with pills? I'm just always so intrigued by that. This is not actually All right, moving all on. These two. Uh, oh, the Versace robes. Uh, it's not a closet tour if there aren't Versace robes. There's, that's a lot of that's a lot of wardrobe space. This is my long dresses, occasion dresses. Okay. See, I've got my cardigans at the Pull end. Pull one out, Safi. And then in this cupboard, I've got my jumpers. This says yes, smart, good. Have to make sure that your knits are sitting. They can't be hung, otherwise they'll stretch. Logo knits, fine knits, cable knits. Everything has a name. All right, listen, she knows her knits. I'm proud. Basically, so I know exactly where. Maybe she doesn't know her knits, but maybe the closet organizer told her about her knits and she listened. This has honestly been so, so Oh, okay. This just like the short dresses here. So yeah, all my short dresses are here. Got it. And then all my the other big coats. jackets, the off-white, the Fendi, the leathers. Coats there. Slippers are to the bottom. So everyone, that was my you wardrobe know? tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you, Saffron. Also, a huge thank you to Carla as well. You should definitely go and check her out because this is what she does for a living. Thank you, Carla. Really we amazing. appreciate you. All her transformations are just incredible. Honestly, that's the end of that experience. It wasn't that bad. From the last one that we watched, anything is uh, moving on up, you know what I mean? So listen, in the grand scheme of things, I think she did a pretty decent job, you know what I mean? It was a lot about organization and things like that, but at the same time, like it seems that the organization she was a big part of, and that also made her think a little bit more about her clothing and what she was wearing and where it was coming from and what it is. In the grand scheme of things, also the luxury product, not really for me, my taste, but I also don't think it was like ostentatious and annoying and like super in your face or ridiculous. I think it was nice, decent, I wouldn't say humble, that's a little bit dramatic. As tasteful, I guess, as it could be. I thank you guys all for watching. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.